So today I go to Publix, our local grocery store, to pick up a uh, some deli meat from the you know the deli, and I order a quarter pound of thinly sliced tavern ham, which is by Boar's Head, and a quarter pound of thinly sliced baby Swiss, uh, at the request of my mother-in-law, and the guy says um. Let me check to see about the baby Swiss. He comes around, he goes, uh, we have one left, one thing left of it. And I said, oh wow. I said, uh, you guys running low on supply or on inventory? And he looked at me and goes, yeah. He said, Boar's Head is not able to deliver here recently. And uh, he points to a sign that's on the top of the deli counter or uh, yeah, deli counter and says that's their reasoning. And um, basically it said they were, you know, running into delays because of unprecedented times, which I found interesting. Um, and so it got me, he and I started talking and he says, yeah, our representative says the, their biggest problem right now is finding people to work. And I was like, and I think you all probably experienced the same thing but everywhere you go right now, you, I see, and I don't know about you, let me know, but I see for help signs pretty much everywhere. And it's mostly in the service industry, restaurants, grocery stores, uh, banks, even my bank here recent, uh, locally is looking for uh, help. And they're running out of people to work. And so you're, of course, getting this delayed uh, effect from last year that is now showing up in the service industry. And I've heard that sort of high-end white collar type jobs are pretty much scarce. I mean, people have upgraded their education or knowledge base and they're moving up from blue collar to white collar positions. But this is something I've heard for a long, long time from the blue collar side of things is there's not enough good people to work. And with COVID and all the stimulus packages and all of a sudden what I stated yesterday about the seven and a half million people who will be coming off of the stimulus uh, benefits. So unemployment, the $300 a week benefits as of um, the beginning week or two of September, there's gonna be 7.5 million people ready, you know, needing to make money and needing income. And I'm looking at the the effects of stimulus and this, you know, you know, the continuation of benefits, you know, unemployment benefits and the effect it's really having. And of course, you know, it never gets better until it gets worse. And my question is, is like I, I was at Publix the other uh, yesterday. I seem to spend a lot of time and money at my local grocery store, um, but they had very little on the shelves and i was talking to a, f a lady i've gotten to know uh, just you know after going there uh, so many times over the last you know 10 years or so and i asked i said your store looks almost i mean empty and she goes it is she goes we're having a hard time getting inventory on a daily basis and it's it's coming from the distributors and the distributors are having trouble getting goods from the manufacturers and it all comes down to the fact they can't find enough people to work. The other side of this, and I, I think I spoke about this about probably three or four months ago, is the cost of transportation or the cost of transporting goods from the West Coast to the East Coast. And we get a lot of agricultural items from the West Coast. If you've ever driven down Highway 1 in California, there's a lot of um, you know vegetable farms, artichokes, uh, hearts, asparagus, uh, avocados, all that kind of stuff. And the cost to move product from the West Coast to the East Coast is almost doubled. Be and that is causing, in t at, at a level, a delay in getting items to our shelves. And just basic items like, I went to go buy tortillas yesterday because we were supposed to have tacos last night, and there were none. There were none in the size that I was looking for or by the brand. And she said, yeah, the brand is having a hard time producing enough. It's a nationwide issue. And so this common theme of lack 
of supply in the system and the lack of ability to get it is really, I think, starting to rear its ugly head. And I think more and more as time goes on, and it's, you know, the, the more, you know, you think about it, it's always a, del a massive delayed effect because there's a lot of stuff in the system, like inventory in the system, but as it gets filtered out and there's less and less ability to produce at the demand level, you get less and less showing up on the shelves. I mean, I've spoken about my mountain bike. Uh, many was back in April, I believe, April. Um, I didn't follow up. I need to do a follow up video on that, but I ended up by going out to Colorado in June and pick, buy, I bought the bike in July, April. I picked it up in Boulder, Colorado uh, at Sporting Garage, who was the only shop in the country that I could find who had this bike. And when I showed up to pick it up, um, Dan, who was the guy who helped me out with this whole thing, said, I don't know what you triggered, but within five days, we had sold our whole inventory of Yeti bikes. And he's like, he goes, and they're all out of state. They all came and picked them up. They drove in to pick them up because they don't ship uh, out of state and they don't ship, period. Um, so it was, it's, it's, I think more and more, we're going to start noticing more um, gaps in the shelves at our local uh, local grocery stores, or our, and we're going to see slower um, service because there's lack of people working. And so, I look at this going back to available jobs number back in on Monday uh, this week, and there's 10 million some odd jobs available, and I I could attest that up and down Highway 30A of where I live here in Florida. There's a lot of job openings. And the problem is nobody's going back to work. And so this is, I think, becoming, is starting to escalate. And I think we're gonna see more and more issues with this problem, which then hurts consumer spending. And I believe we won't see those declining numbers until probably, you know, late September, October, November, which then if, if you apply that to the stock market, if a company makes money based on selling goods, like let's say Boar's Head, I don't know if they're a publicly traded company or not, but their inability to produce product, get it on the shelves and ship because there's not enough people to produce the product, that becomes a really detriment to that company. You think about it from an auto industry. I'm looking at buying a truck um, and replacing the car I have. Well, number one, a brand new truck is astronomical. Number two, it's hard to find what I want. And, and number three, on a used car level, they're astronomical. And so it's stopping me from buying a new truck. And so it's, it's one of these you know, snowball effects or domino effects that we saw light up you know, March of 2020 when COVID first hit. Here's the thing that I consider and that I'm concerned about is the attitude in Washington about continuously supplying and, and enabling these people to stay home and not work. I mean, it's gonna, it's catching up and it would be totally awesome. And I know he would, it would piss a lot of people off but if, if Biden said, you know what, as of September, there are no more additional stimulus benefits, there is plenty of jobs, according to the number that came out on Monday, for all of you to go back to work and be a part of productive part of society. Now there's gonna be a great deal of them who are gonna go, oh, that isn't why we voted you in. But it would be the best thing for our country is to see that seven and a half million people who are feeding off this benefits you know, additional benefits program to go back into work, to go back and be a productive part of this country and start rebuilding this country like, you know, he said he was going to do. And instead, I have a gut feeling that you're going to see a continuation of the enabling, uh, enabling these people to stay home and collect a check. I spoke about it yesterday 
um, in my video about student loans. They've extended the forbearance on student loans into January of 2022. The only reason you do that is because you know you're about to do something else that would cause these people not to be able to produce the income they need. And that really saddens me that we are becoming this administration, and I hate to point fingers, but they're enabling people to ha not work. And, and the thing about working is a sense of accomplishment, a pride, being proud of what you do. I mean, I hear people you know, moaning and groaning about going to work or doing what they're doing. And I'm like, well, then go do something you want to do. You're going to give up something, but you will be happier in the end. And I, I think just having the ability to look at your checking account on payday and go, I earned that money. That is because of my effort, because I showed up on time. I did the work that was asked of me and I did it. But we're building or our government, from what I can tell, is building this attitude of, well, if I can stay home and collect a check and watch, you know, CNN or Fox News or whatever, and I can, you know, roll the dice on the stock market, then I'd rather do that and make less than I would by putting in an effort and doing something that is productive and beneficial for the whole country. We have to change that attitude it has to change um and when the fact that i go to the grocery store and there's limited supplies to supply my you know to to pick from i, I just see it getting worse and i think that'll eventually show up in the numbers down the road when it comes to earnings and that kind of thing and that's where i've become cautious and i don't I don't, I'm, I don't know if maybe we'll get another big stimulus package and we'll see the mar stock market continue to go higher. Most likely that is what's going to happen. And they'll just continuously push it higher and higher and higher. But I think getting back down to a human being standpoint, a being proud of who you are and what you do, putting in the work, sweating a little, um, doing a job is really beneficial for your psychology. You know, it's just, it's just what I believe. And I don't know. So that's my take. That's what I learned today. I hope you benefit from this. It causes you to think um, and help better educate yourself on what is happening uh, in the United States. And really just become a more curious person to ask questions and poke around. I mean, ask your deli guy. Do you guys have enough uh, deli meat and cheese for the week? Or are you guys low on supplies? I'd be curious to hear what they have to say. If you would, share them in, my com in the comments. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with a friend, and please hit the subscribe button. I really like to get over 18,000 subscribers. Um, but I really, at the end of the day, um, of course, this is... I'm not soliciting business. I have no business to solicit at this point, just knowledge and education. Uh, this is not advice, but more of get you to think, be curious and thinking about our country and the future of it and be productive in inspiring other people. So there it is. Have a great day and always live loud.